What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. We are doing another Malala VOD review of the mid-set invitational final lobby where we have this insanely stacked lobby as I was talking about in the last video. Flancy 61 Relic, YFTX, Tupi, Dupi, Title, Malala, and Chushi. Like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a crazy cracked lobby. Um, and I went to watch some games from Malala's POV. He did very, very well in this tournament. I think he was the second highest point scorer, even though he did not win because it was checkmate formats and, you know, checkmate format, DFT, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, I mean, it, it can be, it can be fun. I, I won't, I won't yap too much. In any case, we have an interesting opener here already, tier plus belt, and we have this Corky 2, um, which is, Corky's a weird unit to play around in the current uh, patch, especially now, like, look at our setup. This is such an interesting setup. Like, we have this Disco Tarek as an option here, which, like, is in many ways a completely broken headliner to pick up, uh, but in other ways, like, it doesn't really work with our uh, our board here. So, yeah, we're going to opt to not actually pick that up. We are in the support Anvil Galaxy, and Help is on the way could be another support item. Uh, it's also just a very good augment in general, so I could certainly see picking that up. And we are going to pick up the needlessly big gem from our support Anvil Sentinel uh, Cassante actually works very well on this board because it can allow us to play a strong board. Uh, it allows us to sort of play this like AD flex idea, which is what I think we're going to want to go for here. But we'll end up seeing how that sort of evolves throughout the game. Uh, but, you know, this opener is definitely sort of conducive to playing AD flex. We're going to zoom in here, hope that our support anvil pops. It does not. Interesting as well that we have this Garen in shop, um, but we're not actually able to really like play it very well on our board to, to get 8-bit in. Uh, he wants to just play around this Mosher setup because Urgot's a broken unit. Ur Urgot is just an insane unit early game. So, you know, the, the Kazante's enough front line. We're going to play around the Urgot because he's insane back line. And like, yeah, like we could fit Vi in here over the... Um, we could put Riven in here over the Vi, but I was going to say it's just not worth it. Also, speaking of strong boards, we're fighting Flancy here who went to five on two two. We both have this needlessly big gem. I mean, Flancy knows that if he can... If he can win streak in this spot, he's going to get rewarded really, really hard. And Lala knows as well that uh, winning this fight would be a huge, huge deal, but he just barely cannot win it. So he's going to lose that fight. Um, still, though, got a pretty healthy econ uh, amount, pretty healthy HP amount, only using, only losing that fight by one unit. Uh, a little bit sad, though, that now we have this belt kind of stuck on Corky, though it could always end up being like a Morello, a Guardbreaker. Uh, I tried going Nashra's Tooth Corky the other day, and it did not do too well for me. Uh, we are going to end up also finally getting out of this Vi, getting out of Mosher here, and just playing Big Shot for the Corky. Uh, in, so it, it seems like what Malala prioritizes really hard is this Big Shot, which I think is very, very important for Corky, but it looks like he doesn't really care about... Um, he doesn't really care about 8-bit that much, because we certainly could have got 8-bit in over the Vi earlier, but he wasn't really... I mean, we could and we couldn't have. It. It's weird. Um... There's a rod on carousel here, which yeah, could just be Morello's, uh, which sort of allows us to play flex. The only thing that I don't like about Morello's Corky is that he uses this uh, this AP stat very, very poorly. The other nice thing about that carousel, though, is that we're picking up a set, which not only fits well onto the board as just being a mosher for the Urgot, but it's also, yeah, potentially a bruiser for good frontline, and it's also potentially a heart steal for heart steal. Yeah, I... I like this board the best, I think. I don't really think you need Bruiser. I think your board has so much frontline. It is pretty unfortunate as Malala zooms in that this Yasuo is just smurfing on our board, by the way. Just killed all of our units, killed our gem, so we didn't get our gem proc here, which uh, is really, really unfortunate because that might affect our ability to, you know, make gold in future rounds, but it'll be okay. Um, Senna here is an interesting idea. I wonder if you do pick this up. Um, the, the problem is you lose your frontline a lot, but she's a fantastic holder of this Morello. You can play around like the Sentinel frontline, though. I guess you don't have like a, another Sentinel. You'd have to play like Garen Mordekaiser. Well, I was going to say, no, it's, it's just not good enough here to, to pick up the Senna. She's a fantastic, uh, backliner, but losing the frontline, like we're going to be playing around one star frontline, which would be just too much to, to handle in a spot like this. Also note that we're holding onto this Tarek here. Could certainly still be a disco angle here. We have the Morello Slam, which is a fantastic Twisted Fate item. So yeah, Malala's kind of flexing everything here. Sort of waiting to see what his items are here. Uh, waiting to see if he ever ends up getting Heart Steel and if he wants to keep that in. But yeah, you could play anything from this spot. I mean, any board can use Morello. So yeah, also depends on what support item we get. But see, like, there's a Nami here. He's thinking about holding on to that. And he's going to be able to hold on to that, actually. And a lot of other units. Um, we finally got our items from Minions here. And we have uh, what looks to be more like AP items for sure uh you know we have like potential shojin as a slam potential uh gunblade as a slam potential archangel as a slam any of those uh seem 
actually very reasonable. I'm, I'm curious. It looks like he's looking mostly at Shojin or at, at um, yeah, at, uh, at Gunblade here. So yeah, he goes for Gunblade here as his highest priority slam. It leaves Tier open, which I feel like in this comp, I mean, Tier is such a nice, uh, if, if we're going to play towards some kind of like disco idea, um, like, like playing around here is, is really, really nice. Ooh, and this is just such a close fight. I, ooh, Kaisa almost ends up dashing away and winning that, but just barely can't win it. Very unfortunate. Um, we have shock treatment as an option here. If we want to play AP, it guarantees the shred. I would probably angle that, right? But it will still we have here. I mean, uplink is also just a fantastic augment, especially with all the maybe you just take uplink because it's a generally good augment. Um it's just the thing is like if you pass the shock treatment, you might not end up getting shred later, which is a little bit scary. Uh yeah, I think Malala's really in the tank thinking about this one if he prefers the uplink or the shock treatment. I'm interested to see what he takes here. Because I think both are strong options. Looks like, yeah, he's looking at the uplink here, and oh my god. What a shot that was. It's the Urgot 2 and it's the uh, Kaisa 2. So now our board has spiked really, really hard. We're still, I think, thinking about playing this kind of uh, idea of playing for Disco. We have the Tarek. We didn't get a chance to hold the Nami. I think we had to sell it for Econ or something like that. And maybe that means he's not that interested in playing towards Disco. But I'm curious, if we aren't playing Disco from the spot, then what are we playing with just Morellos and Gunblade? Um, there's an Ari immediately. Can't really fit it onto the board right now, I would say. Yeah, he looked at playing it over the Corky. Um, and I don't know, maybe we'll see some kind of Ari gameplay occur here. I don't know. I, I, I'm i not the biggest fan of this Ari unit. I just feel like uh, Sentinel Ari is a little bit hard to play after the nerfs to Sentinel. Uh, there's Ari Akali, which also feels like a bit hard to play. I do think when you have this, uh, this needlessly large gem, maybe the comp actually has the damage to get through kind of like insanely strong front lines, which I feel like is what the Ari comp lacks is like the actual damage to, to kill front lines quickly enough unless you hit like the perfect board. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we could end up playing around this Ari. I mean, he's definitely going to hold on to it. Uh, if we wanted to play Ari, we'd probably end up taking blue buff here, I would think. It's also on an Akali, so we could play that Ari Akali. Can't pick that up though, so he's just going to go for the chain vest onto Zack. Zack, fantastic unit. We'd come in right now over the uh, Thomas Kench. Uh, so yeah, could just be a solid unit to play around. Ooh, he's late. He looked at double gem for a second there, but yeah, I think that's really, really sus. I think either Aegis or Virtue of the Martyr is the take here. Uh, both are just solid augments that provide uh, some more sort of like time for our board to to, to pop off. Uh, I, I like Virtue of the Martyr a decent bit, but I think I think the stats like it less on this patch now uh, compared to something like Aegis. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know. These support items are always in flux because they're actually like relatively well balanced. So it really depends on what comp you're playing for, which one you want to take. I feel like the Virtue of the Martyr actually, if we wanted to play some kind of like Sentinel Ari setup would be best. But like I said, I don't know about uh, Sentinel Ari. We're holding on to all of these spell weavers. Maybe it's more of like a spell weaver Ari type, uh, type comp. I guess we'll see. One Riven player over there. Uh, there's a Yoni player as well, it looks like. So we're definitely gonna have to keep them in mind. Ari uh, can match up pretty decently into those boards if you can get the Ari on them, uh, though this positioning is really, really unfortunate. The Riven just wrapping all the way around to end up killing our back line. And yeah, we're going to end up we're going to end up selling the Gragas there to pick up the Nami. So staying open still to uh, the Disco line as well. This is just this is very good AP flex play, I would say, by Malala. I imagine because we're ooh, that's a Kiana, but. I don't actually have the echo to, to pair with it right now, so it's a little bit awkward. But yeah, I imagine we're going to sit on this board for one more round and probably not slam anything uh, and then potentially four to it with our, our gold. We're not like super, super broke, but we're not super, super rich either. I mean, these could be fantastic items for a TF setup. This could just be static ship archangels and call it a day. Um, it could also, if you want to do this sort of like Ari setup, go like blue buff. He's going to make crown guard immediately uh, and just say like, yeah, I'll always make that in this spot here and then just stay open to the sort of like either the static shiv or the blue buff or I don't know, potentially neither. There's this person with a Dazzler spat in our lobby that I'm seeing here, though their items definitely don't look like TF items. Curious to see what that board's going to end up being because it looks a little, yeah, a little bit strange. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think we have a decent amount of gold. I think it's pretty reasonable for two in a spot like this. Interesting that he immediately rolls over the uh, the crown guarded item, which you'd have double crown guarded value on. I do think combat caster is fantastic if we play uh, some kind of like Ari comp. Inspiring epitaph is just a really good generic augment. I'd probably take the epitaph. And magic wand is also very, very good if we wanted to do this sort of like static ship archangels thing that I was talking about. But yeah, you got to level here, roll and try to, try to find something good. We pick up the Blitzcrank immediately, which is really nice. We just need to find some backline now. Uh, looks like we're going to start pivoting into this uh, the Spellweaver type comp uh, is certainly what it looks like here. And we're sort of still kind of between these two ideas, right? So, you know, we could play around the Ari, play some kind of more Ari based comp. We could play around TF, certainly. Um, 
he ends up picking up, uh, yeah, that Echo there, which we definitely want to get onto our board. Maybe we play like four Sentinel with this Sentinel Blitzcrank here. And roll more time. Finally picks up Lulu too, which is a solid unit. I would honestly like kind of be more happy to, to item carry Lulu than this Ari one at this point. But it's just, you know, not really in the cards for us. Finally gets the Echo in. Uh, we're just going to play this board for now. We kind of have this Kaisa in sort of randomly on the board, not doing too much. We could actually randomly fit Disco. Uh, and we're going to make the blue buff slam, all right? So yeah, Mala says, I'm zero gold. Uh, my chances of finding a TF and pivoting into that board are pretty low, so I'm just going to slam this blue buff on Ari and ooh, 41 HP. This is actually like a, a really, really scary spot. We definitely, I mean, we hit the Blitzcrank, which is a solid hit on the roll down, but I, I definitely feel like we didn't high roll that roll down too hard. Um, Itemize here, we still don't have that uh, MR shred, so I would like to pick something up like a Static Shiv, and yeah, he does grab the Static Shiv. I wonder if we are going to just slam Static Shiv Kiana. I mean, she'll, as long as she doesn't die immediately, she'll uh, she'll stack it up. We have the Nico, uh, which could be that KDA for us finally, but it's still kind of awkward. We don't have like the KDA units that you tend to really, really like, which uh, are like the, the, the Seraphians, you know, like having a Kaisa 2 on our board is pretty awkward. Uh, and yeah, he's not even going to make the Static Shiv. He's just going to leave the tier onto the... Uh, the Lulu here and say, like, uh, Shred's not as important as spreading cybernetic uplink value. Uh, also, you know, like, the, the static shiv onto Kiana is... It would be a little bit unfortunate just because she's a melee unit. She will die a decent amount of the time. We we fight a decently strong Ezreal board, though they're stuck on Ezreal 1, so I, I definitely feel like that's one of the weaker boards. And now we pick up our Ari pair, so we're getting there a bit to our board, and it's... Yeah, we're, we're almost playing... It's not quite Sentinel Ari, because Sentinel Ari has been nerfed, but yeah, he's he's eventually going to make this pivot now, get the four Sentinel in, uh, which like, definitely seems very straightforward. And yeah, we're, we're just going to play almost Sentinel Ari, which is just four Sentinel Ari, which I believe wasn't nerfed, right? It was six and eight Sentinel that was nerfed on this patch. So four Sentinel should be as strong as it was last patch. It's just that most people weren't playing it because, uh, you know, you really, really like the value that you get from uh, playing, you know, last patch it was six Sentinel was, was insane. Um, but yeah, we have a, a solid frontline. We need to find Ari 2 really badly. And then we're looking at potentially getting Seraphine in and looking for like a five Spellweaver on level up or maybe just adding legendaries to the board. That's another Lulu. I doubt we're going to look for some kind of Lulu 3. That is Static Shiv potential. Uh, and yeah, we definitely need to roll here to pick up Ari 2. There's Ari 2. And I was curious if he was going to continue to roll here. Rolls a little bit here, but opts to stop at that point. Steadfast Heart plus a Static Shiv or Fantastic Slams here. And he's just going to leave the bow on the Kiana. Not too, too concerned with actually finishing a Kiana item, making like, I think he had like Titans as an option or something like that. But he knows this is Kiana 1. She's not the most important unit. He would much rather just get uplink value onto the Nico here, which is an interesting choice, I think. I, I definitely would have been sort of tempted to put the item on Kiana, try to get some kills, try to get her more time to spread items and get that uplink value. But yeah, he doesn't go for it. But yeah, we're, we're playing almost sentinel ari uh and it's doing surprisingly well i'm interested how it's going to do into some of these like more tf boards because this is where i feel like the sentinel ari comp really has trouble is just getting through the front line of those boards but we do have the gem so we'll see we fight uh chushi's board who ends up being an mf reroll board that i mean did hit mf3 it's just i don't know uh, when you're level seven zero gold in a spot like this uh yeah the the board is is definitely not the strongest that it could be. Uh, the other nice thing about our setup is this Blitzcrank. I feel like this Blitzcrank has been sort of like a saving grace for us here. Um, he gets the Seraphine immediately. He's not immediately thinking about cutting the Kaisa for it. I feel like you would just immediately cut it. Like, I would certainly think about cutting this Kaisa. Um, I don't know. He's, he still likes the Kaisa on the board. It's just maybe a two-star unit. Um, we're going to move over here, and I think we'll be okay for now versus the Ribbon. Yeah, the Ribbon's going to go through our front line. And then if the Ari can start casting on the Ribbon, that's when the fight actually becomes really good. And yeah, that's a few Ari casts in, and we end up killing off the Ribbon. And now our spot looks pretty nice. We killed off Relic, and it's just a top four farmed very easily with this comp, which is a, a pretty, I would say, low-tier comp uh, in most people's assessment. I, I think a lot of people say, like, eh, you know, Ari uh, is, is just not that great of a carry. Um... And especially with the changes to Sentinels, like, you can't really do this setup. You need, like, a duo carry, like, playing around potentially uh, Arya Kali, but then Arya Kali is hard to play around. But he got this far just playing around really, really strong frontline with uh, with Ari, just buying time for the Ari. Because the problem is if you go something like Arya Kali and you don't play around this Blitzcrank, is then your frontline just gets shredded and your Ari doesn't have enough time to, you know, get through their frontline. So actually, I kind of like this version of Ari a lot, this four Sentinel version playing around this Blitzcrank. Uh, you can do like a similar version where Ari plays around like Poppy uh, with a strong frontline. And yeah, just buy a lot of time for this Ari and it's it's already a top three. We're looking at potentially going nine and capping out our board higher. Normally be getting stuff like Sona in. I would think we would get this Kais out eventually, but he really likes just the Kaisas. 
I think that the idea, right, behind not swapping the Kai'Sa for Seraphian, uh, though, I mean, now that I think about it, like, I, I was thinking maybe he wanted to keep the gem alive, but you could always just move the gem to Lulu. Uh, because, you know, like, if you put the gem on, like, a one-star Seraphian, she does run, like, a, a very high risk of just getting, like, one-tapped by something. Um, but I, I I feel like you could put it on Lulu. But, I mean, the Kai'Sa does a very good job of, like, hiding the gem away. You see, like, our entire board is almost dead. Yeah, Kai'Sa's our last unit that dies. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something to just keeping Kai'Sa on this board just so that she can hide the gem and keep it alive in these uh, sort of, like, scary long fights. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, pretty cool board. Definitely not something that you see every day. And he's, he's looking at potentially getting Lilia in later. I don't know if he's trying to get some kind of like super fan setup in and then move the steadfast heart. Uh, or maybe she's just, I mean, she's just a sentinel. Uh, just a very solid unit to get. And we pick up Bruiser Alawi on the first roll, which is a very, very nice unit to play. Pick up another Seraphine. Pick up the Gragas, who fits in very well with this setup here. You can get the five Spellweaver in. Uh, we don't really need the um, the Bruiser from Gragas because we uh, we have Bruiser Alawi, but you know, it's still not bad. He's gonna move the Gunblade over to Lulu, which is just, you know, a solid holder of this. And yeah, I mean, we're fighting a scary Vex board, and we were a little bit clumped for, because of the KDA positioning, which is kind of scary, but it looks like with the amount of tankiness that Alawi provides, and yeah, the damage from Ari, we can get through this board, win this fight, and uh, just maybe one more good fight, and it can be top two, uh, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, we're going to roll down a decent bit here. Finally ends up picking up the Lilia, but like it's still a little bit awkward to fit the Lilia on this board um, just because it's it's just 4 KDA. It doesn't really do anything for you. I guess you could think about cutting Kiana, and he does actually cut the Kiana. He gets Ziggs in here. It's too hyper pop. It's a Ziggs. Uh, yeah, I, I could certainly see it, um, especially with uh, this Lulu having three of your items. Like She's a fantastic item holder, so yeah, he's, he's going to pivot into the hyper pop here. It also guarantees that you have that tread in case Lulu dies and you lose your static shiv. So yeah, and he's also like a lot closer to Ziggs too. Than he is to uh to start Kiana, though he ends up picking up Kiana there anyway. Um, we're just gonna continue to roll down here, try to pick up a Ziggs 2, no Ziggs 2 for us. Also, we really, really need to make sure that our um our hyper pop units are positioned appropriately. Uh yeah, something like this looks a lot better where just put your hyper pop units next to Ari. You don't want uh this uh the seraphine ever stealing the hyper pop buff from Ari, even though uh this uh this makes us a little susceptible to Ezreal AoE, which is the really scary thing in these fights. And look at the damage this player has. One Ari cast is gonna kill the Ezreal though. Can this tentacle save us? It looks like it can. It's gonna be a win here. Top two here, and it's just us and YFTX at this point. Uh looking for items here, probably for Ziggs. There's just a Ziggs on carousel, so that's fantastic. We get uh a BT, which isn't the best possible item here, but it is a Ziggs. And Ziggs is Ziggs. Um, he's thinking about BT Ziggs. I would have been tempted to BT the Lulu, but I mean, you know, you keep the Ziggs alive. Ziggs being alive is very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's just us and YFTX who is playing this, uh, this Vex board. It's a little bit awkward because you definitely want to spread out so that you don't die, uh, to the Vex AoE. He's just putting the Alawi in the front so that she can make good usage of the shields, but look at how much damage that Vex does in that fight. Just casts a few times and boom, 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 our front line is destroyed immediately. Like, you... You almost want to bait the Vex ults with tentacles, but like it's 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 just, I don't know, a difficult fight. Uh, we end up picking up a Sona here, which we are going to get in um, just over... What did we cut for that? Because we kept the Lulu in here. It was just over Gragas, right? Uh, because we don't actually need the Gragas in with the Alawi, which, you know, nice pivot. Uh, can move the Static Shiv over there and then the Gunblade over to uh, the Ziggs. It's a Hail Mary to see if we can beat this board, but their front line's so tanky with the Amumu, and the Vex just does so much damage, and once she gets on this back line, she's gonna do so much. One more Ari cast, we kill the Vex, we just get stunned by the other Vex, so it is gonna be a top two for Malala, but I feel like this was a really cool played game with a comp that's, like, definitely a little bit less meta now after the patch. You do not see that many people playing around Ari carry, so a really, really cool game. Uh, definitely had to roll a lot to pick up the Ari, too, uh, so, you know, I felt like it wasn't high roll by any means, and he, he just played a good game of TFT, and it, it worked out. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch channel, my other links down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.